your intelligence and what you have heard from your Guru. For example, when a devotee is in severe danger, then on those occasions 
suddenly, in an emergency, he may call out to the Lord. But then he in danger of the severe situation that's passed, and then he reverts to his uh, normal condition of not requiring anything for himself at all. So this is Anyabila Shunya. Anyabila Shunya. Nothing. Shunya. Devoid of any other desire. Or the tendency to have any other desire. Anyabila Shunya. Not covered by Gyan, by knowledge. What is name? But then what I'm saying is we have to have knowledge. To support our lives, we have to have knowledge. To practice bhakti, we also have to have knowledge. So there's different kinds of knowledge. The knowledge of the nature of the soul, that is required. The knowledge of the nature of the Supreme Lord, and the nature of service to the Supreme Lord, that is also required. But the knowledge encompasses the reader. He was getting so much pleasure from the battle. Similarly, when Kashingade was fighting with Yurani Kashiko, he was getting so much pleasure. But, for example, Chandra they don't consider their activities are not considered to be Uttar Bhakti. Actually, it's not considered to be Bhakti at all because their mood was completely unfavorable to Krishna. They didn't want to please Krishna, but rather they wanted to kill Krishna. So therefore, their activities are not considered to be in the realm of Bhakti. Similarly, uh, the activity in the service of Bhakti Ashoka at times appears to be not favorable to Krishna because Krishna was not happy. Example, when Bhakti Ashoka was feeding him during Namadali, Bhakti Ashoka was feeding him with a breast milk. And Krishna was in so much ecstasy. Mother Yishoka was also in so much ecstasy. Milk was flowing, uh, tears were flowing from her eyes, milk was flowing from her breasts. So that time, the milk boiling on the stove began to boil over because he was thinking that what chance do I have for service? Mother Yishoka's supply of maternal love is unlimited. And Krishna's thirst for that maternal love is unlimited. So where is my chance to serve? With this mood, the mill began to boil over on the stove. So, if I can't perform service, then never I end my life. So then Mother Yashoda, having mercy on the mill, jumped up to save the mill. But Krishna wasn't satisfied. So he was hanging on. Where they say he's hanging on like a monkey. With his arms, he's hanging around Mother Yashoda. With his legs, he's also hanging around Mother Yashoda. And his mouth holds a firm, tight, trying to keep on. And Mother Yashoda would run up. So, Krishna was not happy after this, he became so angry that he broke the yoga court and then there was a whole drama of Navadali. So the question is, if Mother Yashoda is chastising him like this or putting him down when he's not satisfied, sometimes twisting his ear, sometimes smacking his bottom, then how can this be your social service? Because Krishna isn't happy. But actually Krishna is tasting all the moods of eternal love. And when Mother Yashoda came up, but that was a uh, save the mill. This was also in service to Krishna because Shri Gurudev has explained that Mother Yashoda was thinking, my mill may satisfy Krishna now, but I cannot make Sandesh, Ravari, and all these things that Krishna loves. So therefore I have to save this mill. So for his service, Gurudev has explained that the very deep mood of the devotee uh, guru is a guru is more attached even to the articles of Seva, even unto Krishna himself. So therefore, uh, she, Yashoda Maya's mood and intention was completely favorable to Krishna, even though superficially it appears that Krishna was not satisfied. So then this is also included in the category of pure devotional service. Pure devotional service is practiced with the body, with the mind, with the heart, and by soul. And there are divisions, for example, there's direct service and indirect service. The mood, different moods, there's moods leading up to the anger, uh, uh, coming to the level of bhav. So this is sadhana bhakti. And then bhav bhakti also. And when the devotee realizes bhav, then there's the ingredients of bhav. So there's stai bhav. And then there's also moods which nourish stai bhav. So for example, the amachari bhav, 
They appear to be unfaithful, goods of devastation, goods of wishing to die. These are temporary uh, moves which actually enhance the total mixture of the power. So in this way, Shiruk Goswami is explaining in more detail, more deeply, uh, the nature of Uttar Bhakti, the nature of pure, unavoidable social service in Krishna and English. What's the color of the Thank you. 
And when the cleansing process begins to take place, now, Nashra Praishu, Amadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishiki. Now, that message of Srimad Bhagavata begins to remove almost all of the inauspicious elements within our heart. And when that takes place, uh, by hearing the Srimad Bhagavata and also by serving the person Bhagavata, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nityam means constantly, constantly flowing like a stream of honey or a stream of oil when you pour it, there's no rain. So similarly, when we are hearing and serving the Srimad Bhagavatam and the pure devotee of Krishna, who is considered the Srimad Bhagavatam personified, then when that takes place, then Nitya Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Kuntuma Shloki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. Now, pure bhakti, which is called Nishti, Naishtiki Bhakti, that means that we are fixed, no longer wavering, sometimes doing bhakti, sometimes uh, running here and there for material enjoyments. No, now one is performing bhakti 24 hours a day. And then what happens is, Tada Rajas Kopava Kamaloka Dayas Chayene. Kamaloka Dayas Chayene. Chaita Eitaya Pranavitam Siddham Sattva Yerasiddhati. So the problem that we have in this world is that we are conditioned souls. We are conditioned by the three modes of material nature, sattva, rajas, and tamas. We are impelled to act sinfully, and we are impelled to act for material gratification of our senses because of the influence of the modes of nature. So as a result of this purification of the heart, then the modes of nature become slackened. Huh? And then change the entire anatta. Now our consciousness becomes free and untouched from the effect of the modes of nature and sit up subway in this unity. Now one becomes situated in Sattvagun. And in Sattvagun, now he is acting always in the transcendental platform of Shrikha Sattva. He begins to go towards the transcendental level. Now at that time, Evam Prasanta Manaso, Bhagavad Bhakti Yogata, Bhagavad Tattva Vinyan, Mukta Sangasya Jayate. Now in that condition, he becomes very pleased. Just like the question was asked to the sages, how can one's soul, how can the Atma become satisfied and happy? So in this way, by this process, now Prasanta Manaso, now the mind becomes very pleased with transcendental experience. Uh, because now Bhagavad Bhakti to the Supreme Lord is being performed all the time. Then Bhagavad Tattva Vidyana, just like Shri Gurudev explained, when one performs this Bhakti Yoga, automatically Jnana comes, transcendental knowledge, and also detachment. So Bhagavad Tattva Vidyana, he understands all Tattva Jnana. What is my Tattva? What is the truth of this material existence? What is the truth of the, of the Jiva souls within this world? What is the truth of Bhagavan? And so forth. All these tattvas become manifested in the heart. And then Mukta Sankasya Jayate. Now the soul within this world, even though inhabiting this body, he becomes Mukta He becomes a liberated soul within the material world because he's always constantly engaged in the service of Krishna. And then finally, Vidyate, Hridaya, Raktish, Chidyate, Sarva, Samashaya, Shinate, Chasya, Karmani, Drishta, Eva, Nishwade. So now, Vidyate, Hridaya, Raktish, in our heart, this knot of material existence, like a very entangled knot, when you sometimes have a knot which is very difficult to untie, you see that it's very complex. Similarly, the souls are trapped within the material world because of the complexity of many, many lifetimes of repeated sinful karmas, activities, and even pious activities. So we are forced to take another birth in this world. But when the Shiva Bhagavatam powerful message has caused the uh, piercing of this knot and completely freeing us, we can take Vrita Yakranti. Now the heart is no longer controlled by material existence. And Jitya takes Sarva Samshaya. Now we have complete realization and no doubts whatsoever about the truth of the Supreme Lord and about the truth of devotion to Him. We understand perfectly. And now Jitya takes Chasya 
Parmanani. Now this endless chain of karma becomes terminated. We no longer are conditioned in this material world. Trishna Deva Ishwari. Now we see within our very hearts that the Supreme Lord is controlling all. He is situated everywhere and we are serving His lotus feet at every moment. So this is the process given by Sutta Goswami in the Srimad Bhagavatam, how we can attain the spiritual perfection. And we have this time period now, just as Krishna Parikshit Maharaj sat in front of Sukadeva Goswami for seven days during the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. We also have that opportunity at the lotus feet of our beloved Brother David.
was serving them. So during that period, he would go and he would hear Harikata from these great saints. So here, Shinana Muni, Guru is explaining that he's explaining his previous life so that one can understand that one who takes Guru, that Guru that they have, they, what is the level? And so he's, by explaining to Shilu Vyasthi, then he's showing us the principle that one should accept that Guru, who has also gone through a process and has achieved that stage of self-realization, or is already in that stage of self-realization and has manifested in the past time. In other words, to impress some faith, that the person who's speaking from Vakata is not an ordinary person, that they have actually gone through a process. So, this young boy started to, with the permission of these Vakatanantas, he would honor their Mahaprasha. So he stated, Bhaktapada Duni Bhaktapada Jan Bhaktapok Abhishesh Tin Mahabhava. That these three things, that these three things, um, Bhaktapada Duni, that the dust which is coming from the lotus feet of pure white stone, Bhaktapada Jan, that the water which is washed in the lotus feet, and Bhaktapok Abhishesh, then that prasad which they tasted, which they honored, and we get the reverence. And also, the Harikata, that these things are extremely, extremely powerful. By taking the reverence from these sadhus, from these great saints, saint persons, and by hearing the Harikata, then this young boy, he became very attached. He gave up his material attachment. Then, even, this attachment he had for his mother, he gave it up, and now his attachment was hearing from these saintly persons uh, and serving them. After these months of Chattamasa was over, then these Bhaktivedanta's they left. But before leaving, then they very mercifully they imparted on this young boy uh, mantra. So now he was in so much separation. What was the separation? It was the separation from Sarasana. His mother was there. She was giving him so much love and affection. But he was thinking that this is dependent. That actually I want to absorb myself in the mantras which I have received from these great saintly personalities. So he's showing us that we should develop this attachment for sadness. That if we have any prayer in our life, then that prayer should be that birth after birth, may I always have prayed for your son, son. So this boy at a very early age, he had this mentality, totally attached to the son. But his mother was loving him so much love and affection, and he was thinking, how can I be free from this impediment? He was saying, he was taking the love of his mother as an impediment to his body. That is thinking. That that which is favorable for Abhak, we should accept. And that which is unfavorable, we should reject. He was getting the love and affection of his mother, but he took that home because this is an impediment for me to follow in the mood of these great city persons, that this is not favorable. So what happened? That his mother, she got bitten by a snake. And she left the body. Instead of this young boy crying, little five year old boy, immediately he thought, My this attachment or this obstacle to my body is now wrong. And immediately he left that place uh, and he started to travel. It's explained in the Shri Bhakta that he traveled through so many places, metropolises, cities, where the mode of passion is very, very prevalent. Places where the mode of ignorance is prevalent. And then finally, he came to a place in the forest which was the mode of goodness. And there he sat and he was um, meditating and chanting the mantra which he received from these Bhaktivedantas. While chanting the mantra, then occurring in his heart, very, very beautiful form, Lord. 
Lord Krishna, Shadow Chakra Vedal Padma College, this club and Lotus Club. And so this boy showed what is the power of receiving both of